welcome to Indep. I'm Tina Jha. Can we imagine life without using the web? With no email, no access to breaking news, no timely weather reports, no online shopping and multiple other things. Perhaps not. The web and the internet have transformed the way we live. They have created new opportunities and made our lives easier and simpler. On 12th March 2019, the World Wide Web turned 30 years old. It was invented by British computer scientist Sir Tim Berners-Lee in 1989. Back then, Berners-Lee could scarcely have imagined the impact his idea would have in transforming the world. In its 30 years of existence, the web has connected and united people all over the world. As in January 2019, digital population worldwide included almost 4.4 billion people who are active internet users and 3.5 billion social media users. In terms of internet users, China, India and the United States of America rank ahead of all other countries. Today in In-Depth, we look at the journey of the World Wide Web and the significant transformation it has brought about in the lives of people. We also reflect on the advantages and disadvantages of web and the difference between the web and internet. The World Wide Web is a network of online content formatted in hypertext markup language or HTML which is the language used for creating web pages. Content on the web is accessed via the HTTP or HTTPS protocol. 30 years since its invention, World Wide Web has connected the world in a way that was not possible before and made it much easier for people to get information, share and communicate. It has allowed people to share their work and thoughts through social networking sites, blogs as well as video sharing. In this report, let's take a look at the 30-year journey of the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web, an invention that changed the future of the human world, has completed 30 years of its existence. On 12th March 1989, Sir Tim Berners-Lee, working for Europe's physics lab CERN, proposed a decentralized system of information management. This signaled the birth of the World Wide Web and is now used by billions of people. To self-explain, like it's been 30 years, as of today, like uh, every job, everything is dependent on it. It's not a necessity, it's not a luxury. Basically, everybody is dependent on the internet. Just imagine a couple of hours without internet. So even the connectivity, whether it comes to the bank, school, colleges, any financial transactions, online shopping, uh, anything, any kind of communication is, you know, dependent on the internet. So it's a dependency and uh, it's been 30 years and today's phase, like in, uh, early, say in early 90s, see that was the internet was introduced. And in uh, early 2000, where Wi-Fi is a new thing uh, in India. Initially, Berners-Lee proposed a system of hypertext links, the possibility of clicking keywords on one page and being led directly to the page dedicated to them, thus connecting to several other pages. He envisioned a large hypertext database with typed links named Mesh to help his colleagues share information among multiple computers. Berners-Lee was then allowed more time by his boss to develop his flowchart into a working model writing the HTML language, the HTTP application and World Wide Web app, the first web browser and page editor. By 1991, the external web servers were up and running. On 6th August 1991, the first website went online. It was dedicated to the World Wide Web project and was hosted on Bernard Lee's next computer. The website described the basic features of the web, how to access other people's documents and how to set up your own server. In 1992, Berners-Lee uploaded the first photo on the web, an image of the CERN house ban. In April 1993, the web was made public. 
CERN made World Wide Web technology available on a royalty-free basis by making the software required to run a web server freely available along with a basic browser and a library of code, the web was allowed to flourish. However, the turning point in the history of the World Wide Web began with the launch of the Mosaic Web Browser in November 1993. Mosaic was a graphical browser developed by a team at the National Center for Supercomputing Applications at the University of Illinois. It is the first search engine that accepted pictures and is credited with popularizing the World Wide Web. Mosaic was later replaced by the likes of Internet Explorer, Google Chrome and Mozilla Firefox. World Wide Web is an application which has been uh, developed or supported by HTTP URL and the HTML programming. So it's basically an application through which uh, the combination and inclusion of the HTML and HTTP versions through which URL are made and through which you can uh, it's totally and World Wide Web it's, itself is a meaningful uh, thing through that you can just open it into the browsers. The HTML part is uh, open into the browsers through the HTTP URLs. The web has changed a lot since it was first created. The first websites were made up of simple pages of just words and pictures. Most people could not create their own web pages. In order to make a web page, one had to write HTML code by hand. As the web began to develop, people started communicating and sharing more. They used social network sites and blogs. It became much easier to create own content on the web and also to share it. This new type of web became known as Web 2. Today, the way people use the web has changed, but technologies have not. Many of the technologies that ran the first web pages are still in use today. Although search engines have become better at reading, understanding and also processing information. With the evolution and development of web, the number of internet users also rose significantly from only a few million in the early 1990s to more than 400 million people by 2000, the year which marked the beginning of wireless internet for all. Protocol, HTTP, uh, where it converts the uh, protocols into a layman vi visual thing, uh, like uh, it converts into the HTML format where a user can easily view the graphics as well as the text into its own browsers, where he can understand uh, the uh, normal user language or a layman language, which converts into the human readable language. Those are the protocols. In the words of Sir Tim Berners-Lee, the web has today become a public square, a library, a doctor's office, a shop, a school, a design studio, an office, a cinema, a bank, and so much more. It has brought more than half of the world online. It has connected the world in a way that was not possible before, and made it much easier for people to get information, share and also communicate. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Many users believe internet and World Wide Web are synonymous. While technically, these two are entirely different though related to each other. In simple terms, internet is a network of computers while World Wide Web is a collection of information that can be accessed by using the internet. Here is a detailed report talking about the basic difference between the two. People often talk about the internet and World Wide Web as if they are interchangeable. But in fact, both are separate but related things. The internet is a global network of networks, while the web is a collection of information that can be accessed via the internet using a web browser like Chrome, Safari, Microsoft Edge, Firefox and others. In simple terms, the internet is infrastructure, while the web is service based on that. For better understanding, the internet can be viewed as a library, while the World Wide Web can be understood as a collection of books, audiobooks, DVDs, etc. in the library. See, the World Wide Web begins with the idea of internet. And internet precedes the World Wide Web actually by about 10 years. In 1980s, internet was a military experiment done by largely the United States Armed Forces in collaboration with the UK and France. Now the World Wide Web, something which we actually call internet but the right, right world is the WWW, uh, begins with a proposal by Tim Berners-Lee in the year 1989. 
and that's why we are celebrating the 30th year uh, of the World Wide Web. Now, the first proposal came out in 1989. Interestingly, it originated in, uh, in Europe, uh, in uh, the CERN. Now, CERN is a well-known name for particle physics, but few people know that CERN has a lot to play as a role in the advent of the World Wide Web as well. So the World Wide Web is a part of the internet, which is used for many other applications. For example, emails and other messaging apps that we use for communication run through the internet and not the World Wide Web. The internet was conceptualized during 1969 by the Advanced Research Projects Agency. However, the World Wide Web was initialized much later during the 1990s. The Internet is a comprehensive network of computers, while the World Wide Web is a collection of web pages following the HTTP protocol that can be accessed via the Internet from any part of the world. The HTTP protocol is a kind of language that is used on the Internet in order to transfer data and communicate. All pages that are part of the World Wide Web begin with HTTP followed by colon, two backslashes with www being an abbreviation for World Wide Web. As I said, so there are several ways, right? So one is that uh, the number of websites, so the, the core of a World Wide Web is how, many, how much data it holds. Uh, the World Wide Web's uh, data, if you compare by sites alone, has grown from 130 odd sites in 1992, 93 to more than a billion sites today. Uh, the data speed, the data exchange has gone up from, uh, as I said, 100 GB in a day to 61,000 GB in a second today. It has added more and more users over time. India itself has, depending on what estimate you look at, anywhere between 150 to 300 million users, uh, depending on what you look at it as. Uh, Internet and World Wide Web has become friendly for a mobile phone today. Functioning of the search engines is based on World Wide Web. Search engines available within the World Wide Web and not other sites located across the Internet. Search engines are essentially sites that are computer generated. These sites are primarily found through computer programs that are used to crawl across the World Wide Web that is said to have as many as 15 to 30 billion pages. Each search engine is a collection of millions of pages from which it gathers information about a topic or phrase searched by the user. While the search engines make use of the World Wide Web to provide you the needed information, everything you do online isn't viewed via web. These include email, voice over IP services like Skype and others, file transfer protocols like FTP or BitTorrent, video streaming services like Netflix, when not viewed in a web browser, online games like World of Warcraft, content streaming websites like Netflix often use dedicated software to provide their content on your preferred device like your mobile phone or gaming console. This too is not the web but some service specific streaming protocol that traverses the internet. However, when you view the content in your web browser on your PC, the content is delivered over the web. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Time for a short break on the program. On the other side, we talk about the advantages and disadvantages of World Wide Web and Internet. Do stay with us. Welcome back. You're watching In Depth on 30 years of World Wide Web. When it comes to advantages and disadvantages of the World Wide Web, we may agree on some issues, but in most cases, we will disagree and disapprove of some actions that are introduced to us without our consent. Furthermore, we are not always in a position to say what is an advantage for us, as it might be a disadvantage for someone else. More details in our next report. Marking the 30th anniversary of his revolutionary innovation, World Wide Web inventor Tim Berners-Lee in a media interaction appealed for internet users to strive to maintain complete control of their data. He criticized the increasing commodification of personal information 
and has been on a mission to save his invention from a range of problems increasingly dominating online life. He hailed the opportunities the web had created, giving marginalized groups a voice and making daily life easier. But he warned it has also created opportunity for scammers, given a voice to those who spread hatred and made all kinds of crimes easier to commit. We have to be careful. Uh, we need to constantly be analyzing the web and how, it's, and how people interact on it. Uh, to be, uh, because of what I'm worried about is that there should be a large-scale emergent phenomenon. Uh, that there should be sort of like, like the financial system works fine and then one day it crashes. As the World Wide Web becomes an increasingly popular platform for the delivery of digitized information, librarians face the challenge of finding and using information that's accurate and reliable. But the notion of the internet as a virtual library and using the web to access reliable information is a complicated proposition. Attempts at gaining intellectual control and achieving precision recall over an ever-expanding universe of text, image and sound is daunting. Effective utilization of the web presupposes appropriate hardware, software and searching skills. But websites also frequently lack the authority that we associate with published works. World Wide Web gave the idea to human, humankind that knowledge and access to knowledge should be free. And today, because of that, you have 1 billion sites. You have more than 30 billion emails sent every day across the world. So that has helped people communicate better. It has cut down pollution because you don't have to travel that much. It has made efficiency of, uh, of data very fast. It has also helped uh, in terms of connecting uh, you know, a widely spread uh, world into a one common entity. It has brought the world together. Social media is one of the biggest products which rides on World Wide Web. So things like Facebook and Google helps you connect with people. And, um, and of course, uh, today with sites like Wikipedia and so on, you can find any information which you need, uh, usually free or at least as close to free as possible. Among the benefits of the internet is the availability of free information. We can gain knowledge on any subject within the comfort of our home. The low cost of initial connection is also an excellent way to invite people to join the World Wide Web community. The advantages of the internet can be summarized as follows. Availability of mainly free information, low cost initial connection, reduces cost of sharing information, the same protocol of communication can be used for all the services facilitates rapid interactive communication, facilitates exchange of huge volumes of data, facilitates professional contact, no barriers to divulgence, facilitates access to different sources of information which is continuously updated, facilitates management of company information system, it is accessible from anywhere, it has become the global media. Internet has also enabled a lot of malpractices. Uh, for instance, uh, there was a whole, you saw in uh, 2016 US elections and beginning thereon, how fake news, how uh, fabricated news was used as a tool to swing a democratic election in the, in the world's oldest democracy, as they call it. The other problem is that internet and uh, World Wide Web in general with social media allows for faceless conversations. So where, especially children, there have been a lot of cases where child predators, uh, people have been uh, approaching children with wrong intention and children get exposed to this. So it's important for us to be aware. Uh, this is a very big problem in US and it's a catching up problem in India which we'll have to address very soon. World Wide Web requires an efficient information search strategy. Searches can be slow since it is difficult to filter and make a priority on some information. Furthermore, there is no guarantee that you will find what you are looking for in the end and there are many unconnected data and infos. Besides, it has no regulations and no quality control and the fact that information can easily be updated anytime can also cause many problems when it comes to referencing. Some of the disadvantages are danger of overload and excess information. It requires an efficient information search strategy. The search can be slow. It is difficult to filter and prioritize information. No guarantee of finding what one is looking for. There is a lot of apparently unconnected information. Net becomes overloaded because of large number of users. No regulation. No quality control over available data. 
the ease with which information can be constantly updated can cause problems of referencing however one must not forget that the web is not only a space of information it is a tool to connect people with shared interests the power of the web is to enable anybody to share information the web can enable a more participatory democracy and allow the potential spread of information to places where freedom of speech is not encouraged bureau report rajya sabha tv So that's it from us in today's edition of In Depth. We'll be back same time tomorrow with a comprehensive view on some other subject. You can also watch our episodes online on YouTube and Twitter and send us your feedback as well as suggestions. Thank you very much for your time.